What brings me back to McDonald's is their french fries. They are excellent, crisp and golden brown. Ooh, piping hot, fresh from the golden arches, baby, the McFries. Yeah, they're soft. I like them. <laughs> soft. <laughs> the humble McDonald's french fry is actually the best-selling fast food item of all time. These are McDonald's fries, and this is everything that's in McDonald's fries. Potato, potato, what does Mickey D's put in those fries to make them so good? Are they really even potatoes? These look like potatoes, but are they really potatoes? French fries, starch, salt, fat. This is the worst type of fat that you can possibly eat. Corporations cook very differently than people do. They use vast amounts of salt, fat, and sugar, much more than you would ever use in your own cooking. And the reason they do that is those are three incredibly attractive and incredibly cheap ingredients. And when they're layered properly, as in a chip, they're incredibly addictive. You're looking at heart disease, diabetes. I was feeling bad in the car, feeling like shit. Really, I was feeling really, really sick and unhappy. Started eating, feel great, feel really good now. I feel so good, it's crazy. I look at this big box as just one big box of death. So, it's the early 1940s, and McDonald's is just a single, tiny, quirky roadside drive through in San Bernardino, California. And their fries were actually kind of healthy? McDonald's fries back then were literally just potatoes that were fried in 93% beef tallow and only a very small percentage of vegetable oil, 7%. This combo of mostly beef tallow with just a tiny bit of vegetable oil created mind-blowing, finger-licking, drool-emitting, crispy, golden fries. I love them. Golden brown on the outside, fluffy white inside. Mm -hmm. And they're uh, not too oily, salty, crunchy. And they were amazing and became a giant hit. While most of the fast food joints at the time were frying in only oil, McDonald's was using beef tallow because it actually saved them money. Pretty crazy, right? This was back when natural healthy beef fat was cheaper than toxic seed oils. The beef tallow gave these fries this indescribable beefy flavor that people just couldn't get anywhere else. It had this succulent umami taste, nested inside the perfect salty, buttery soft potato, which the McDonald's brothers would air dry in crates to evaporate the moisture. It was nothing short of pure perfection. Yes, McDonald's fries were special. McDonald's world famous fries taste so good they disappear faster than you can eat them. So watch out. But then came a businessman named Ray Kroc. He wanted to take McDonald's and expand it across the country, across the world. But in order to do that, these fries made from real potatoes, beef tallow, and salt just wasn't gonna cut it. He needed something more consistent, more scalable, more addictive. And so, ever so slowly, McDonald's french fries started including more and more ingredients, more and more additives, more and more chemicals. They started jamming more and more food science into it. And yes, more and more seed oils. To where today, McDonald's french fries are the single most addictive fries on the planet, with an ingredient list so long and hard to pronounce, while being fried in a murky blend of canola, corn, and soybean oil, in a formula so perfected that no one ever craves fries from Burger King, or Arby's, or In-N-Out. No, they're only ever addicted to McDonald's fries. And it was all by design. Oh, tasty oh, time. Oh, oh. I love fries, y'all. I know exactly where these are from. Instant. <laughs> well, you have to make a choice, and we're going to give our answers in unison. Okay. Right now. Here we go. And three, two, one. McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah, easy. Mm. McDonald's. Fluffy, salty, definitely McDonald's. Taking a bite of one is like taking a bite of my entire childhood and the American flag. There was simply nothing like it. This is the story behind one of the most iconic fast food items in America and the world, and it will make you never look at french fries the same way ever again. Only specially selected whole russet potatoes can make the world's most famous fry. You've seen potatoes with a little brown line sometimes or spots that come through it. Well, McDonald's won't buy them if, you, if your potatoes have that. And the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid. And the only way to do that is with a pesticide called Monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in Idaho won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray. 
Welcome to Evil Food Supply, and let's get into it. You know, by the time kids are able to speak, most of them can say McDonald's. Bye, burger, please! Speaking of McDonald's, you might remember the McDonald's hot coffee case, where a woman spilled hot coffee on herself and sued the restaurant. She simply wanted $20,000 for her medical bills. McDonald's offered her a measly $800, so she sued them and was awarded $640,000 before settling out of court. The moral of the story is that unless you have good legal representation, corporations will take advantage of you. That is where Morgan & Morgan comes in, America's largest injury law firm where you don't pay a penny unless they win your case. Your injuries could be worth millions, but if legal expenses are what's keeping you from seeking the compensation you deserve, then you may want to submit your case to Morgan & Morgan with the link below. They are good. Take the case of Melissa Melvin, for example. She got offered just 100 k but with the help of Morgan & Morgan, they were able to get her awarded over $8 million. Or Jacob Rogers. Morgan & Morgan were able to get his pretrial offer of $20,000 to a verdict of $120 million. With 1,000 plus lawyers dealing with all types of cases, like car accidents, defective products, and class action lawsuits, they can take on almost anything. But because they get paid only if they win, they have to be selective about the cases they take. You can see if your case is eligible by going to forthepeople.com slash EFS, where you can submit your case in eight clicks or less without leaving your couch. That's forthepeople.com slash EFS to submit your case. Thanks to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. This is Ray Kroc, the multi-mixer fellow you spoke to. When do you figure we can expect them? See, originally, Ray Kroc went to McDonald's to sell them a milkshake machine. But after he saw the massive crowds, the highly efficient kitchen, and those golden, crispy fries, he knew he had to get a piece of that sweet McDonald's pie. So he offered the McDonald's brothers, Dick and Mac, a little deal. He would expand McDonald's into a multi-state franchise in exchange for a cut of their exploding profits. And you see, the McDonald's brothers were already looking for a guy to help them expand. They were just a couple of humble fry cooks. They didn't really know how this franchising stuff worked. So they accepted his offer, and Ray got straight to work. Yes, the fries were damn freaking tastic, but Croc noticed that not every batch turned out that same golden brown color. And some fries ended up being a little more crispy than others. And this simply would not do. To build a national fast food chain, every fry needs to be consistent. Customers needed to be able to go to a McDonald's in California and be able to get the exact same fries as what they would get at a McDonald's in New York. So Ray made some adjustments to the McDonald's cooking process. He had an electrical engineer invent something he dubbed the potato computer. See, when you drop a batch of raw french fries into the fire, the temperature of the oil instantly drops. With the potato computer, it would let you know exactly when the oil has risen by three degrees so you can take the fries out. That way, you would have fries cooked to the exact same specification every single time. And to make sure each fry had the same crispiness level, he sent out a squad of potato testers who would literally take biopsies of potatoes from the farmers they bought from just to make sure they had the right water content at 20 to 23%. He also sourced the most flawless, perfect potato possible, the Russet Burbank. See, the Russet Burbank is special. This potato is exceptionally long and hard to grow, making it the perfect shape for McDonald's signature straw-like fries that just boutique out of their red fry cartons. And the starch level was perfection. But the problem with Russet Burbank is that they usually have those gross-looking brown spots on the inside. This is called net necrosis. In reality, it's just discoloration that is completely harmless to eat. But from a marketing standpoint, these brown spots might as well be a death sentence. 
These brown spots make your fries look old, stale, not fresh. There's no way you could ever stand for brown spots on your fries. Not only do they have to taste perfect, but they also have to look perfect if you want them to be addictive. So you tell the farmers you buy from that you will not tolerate any brown spots. And how do you get rid of these natural brown spots? By spraying toxic pesticides on them, of course. And you've seen potatoes with a little brown line sometimes or spots that come through it. Well, McDonald's won't buy them if, you, if your potatoes have that. And the only way to eliminate that is to eliminate an aphid. And the only way to do that is with a pesticide called Monitor that is so toxic that the farmers who grow these potatoes in Idaho won't venture outside into their fields for five days after they spray. And then when they harvest their potatoes, they, they have to put them in these atmosphere-controlled sheds the size of a football stadium uh, because they're not edible for six weeks. They have to off-gas all the chemicals in them. So you see the desire for a certain kind of chip leads to a certain kind of agriculture. More on this later. But back to the story. Ray Kroc had become the mad scientist of fast food. And by the late 1950s, he started opening McDonald's locations all over America. In Chicago, New York, Tennessee. And just like they did in San Bernardino, Americans lost their minds. Hello, welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order, please? Yeah, and I like being close to my favorite french fry. Nobody can give you all of this at a McDonald's price. Except McDonald's. McDonald's. Thanks for making us number one. We did together. So your prize-winning fry recipe was in the bag. But you, Ray Kroc, had one little problem. See, delivering potatoes to all your McDonald's locations is a hassle. It's expensive, and honestly, it's not what smart businessmen do. So you made a deal with your good friend, John Richard Simplot, a guy who was already making and selling frozen fries in his giant factory in Idaho. This was the perfect opportunity to make McDonald's even more efficient than it was before. So you had Simplot cut, boil, fry, and freeze your fries, and then ship them out to your locations. This was a genius move, and it severely cut down on costs. But why stop there? Simplot also had some great food additives on hand to make your fries even tastier. So you decided to dunk the fries in dextrose, which is a type of powdered sugar derived from good old Monsanto GMO corn. This extra dusting of sugar gave the fries that indescribable crispy shell on the outside, and it would shoot people's blood sugar through the roof and contribute to weight gain, heart disease, diabetes, acne, low energy, and depression. You also added a chemical called sodium acid pyrophosphate. This chemical keeps the fries a sunny yellow even after they've been frozen. Sodium acid pyrophosphate would later be proven to cause immune system damage in rats. But as we talked about before on this channel, the color of food can be just as important as the taste. Our eyes can be deceiving. If food looks fresh, it will taste fresh. If it doesn't look fresh, well, <laughs> you could forget about your dreams of fast food domination. But somewhere along the way, animal fats started to become demonized. Fat is the enemy. <laughs> Authority figures said that it was animal fats that we've been eating for thousands of years that were causing heart disease. Not all these new chemicals and seed oils that were introduced in the last few decades. Documentary on this coming soon. So as McDonald's, you followed the trend and moved away from frying your fries in beef tallow. You know the chief killer of Americans is cardiovascular disease, disorders and degeneration of the heart and blood vessels. Here are vital statistics. They show that this problem here in America is the worst in the world. Instead of frying in mostly beef tallow, which you have done for decades, you would now fry exclusively in a murky blend of canola, corn, and soybean oil. It was the ultimate irony. McDonald's had removed the last healthy ingredient from their fries in the name of health. And this change would kind of ruin the beefy flavor that your fries are famous for. But that's okay because there are plenty of even tastier additives we can add in to make up for it. A 
lot of the French fries McDonald sends home with people never make it all the way home. Maybe you should get an extra one for the road. Why is it that McDonald's fries are so much better than literally every other fry out there? No one craves the fries at Burger King. Out of all the french fries today, these are definitely the most pale and fake looking. They're also quite thick and greasy. No one's hankering for an Arby's curly fry or Sonic's onion rings. The answer? It's all in the details. Have you ever wondered why McDonald's fries are served in glossy red cartons? And why are the fries so yellow? Studies have shown that when a human sees the color red, it literally raises blood pressure and heart rate giving the observer a sense of urgency. This is why sale signs are usually red. And the color yellow? Yellow is the most visible color on the spectrum. So when someone looks at yellow, it really jumps out at them. It also represents carby foods like pasta and bread. So when you look at yellow, you naturally start to salivate. So putting your yellow fries in a red carton was the ultimate combo. You also needed to make sure the fries were chemically addictive with the perfect ratio of sugar, fat, and salt, AKA the bliss point. And yes, this is a real thing. American market researcher and psychophysicist Howard Moskowitz stated that a bliss point is the point where the levels of saltiness, sweetness, and richness are perceived as being just right. Within the food industry, this combination created a wave of craveable and addicting foods. And to replace that umami flavor of the beef tallow you got rid of, you simply throw in some quote unquote natural beef flavor. And guess what? When this natural beef flavor hits the hot oil, it actually produces a high amount of MSG. You know MSG, the flavor enhancer that has been linked to brain damage, obesity, and increased tumor formation. Studies have also shown that when lab rats eat foods laced with MSG, they'll eat 40% more than they usually would. That is the potent stuff laced in your fries. And now, your highly addictive fry recipe is complete, and it wasn't long before the entire world got hooked. So it's the mid 2000s, and as the new CEO of McDonald's, Jim Skinner, you're on top of the world. There are over 30,000 McDonald's locations worldwide. There's McDonald's in Australia, France, Japan, Egypt. There's even one on a Swedish mountaintop. Yes, you won fast food. But with a booming worldwide franchise, you now need more potatoes than ever. And farmers across America knew this. They also knew that you wouldn't accept anything other than your precious russet Burbanks, which is why most potato farmers across the US switched to growing russet Burbanks and dusting them with heaps of monitor pesticides. The pesticide that was deemed highly hazardous by the WHO and was eventually straight up banned in 2009. But up until 2009, using monitor on your potatoes was fair game. Actually, you kind of demanded it. And after decades of spraying Monitor in places like Idaho and Minnesota, the people who lived near the fields started to get strange symptoms. One woman said that 29 of her sheep died all at once because of the Monitor pesticide drift. They started spraying on us and uh, the, they were spraying right next to the sheep. Then that winter, the winter of 96, 97, one by one they started to die. We lost 29 head. He cut one open and their livers were tan instead of the dark red, which means they were poisoned. Other people got so sick, they had to leave their homes, which had been in their families for years. We all got hit pretty hard. And I knew after that, that I had to get out of there yet. Um, I wasn't likely to survive if I got hit like that again. And I left. It was really hard because I had family close by and really um, deep connection to the land. The pesticide drift would even reach school playgrounds nearby. Some days you could stand in front of that school or you could stand in that community and the smell of that chemical was almost overwhelming. It was so strong. Monitor pesticides is literally fatal if inhaled. It says it right on the information sheet. The farmers knew to wear masks or not to go into their fields after spraying, but what about the people nearby? 
What about the wind carrying the pesticide into other areas? You didn't really care to look into this because, well, it would hinder your bottom line. The goal is to sell as many fries as possible, not worry about poor people in a sleepy town in Minnesota. When Monitor was finally banned because it's a deadly poison, you made sure that any mention of McDonald's using Monitor on their potatoes was wiped clean from the internet. Yes, you've been using it for decades, but hey, not anymore. Now you're using a different pesticide, which I guess we'll just have to wait and see if it's also toxic. Meanwhile, the victims of your decades-long monitor experiment are left to suffer. Hi, and welcome to McDonald's. May I help you? Uh, yes, I'd like a Big Mac, a large order of fries, and a large Coke. Are you sure this is a large? Hmm. Would you like me to supersize that for you? Please. Well, that's better, but it still doesn't look like enough food. How about I fat ass it for you? <laughs> wow. That is one badass me. Americans love their McDonald's fries. But what is a McDonald's fry really but a limp, sad representation of what it once was? And I thought when they first started out, the french fries were very good. And then the nutritionists got at them, that it, it turned out to be erroneous that beef tallow fat was bad and that lard was bad and so forth. And so they changed it to some kind of a nutritionist oil and they've been kind of limp ever since. I, I never really eat them, which is too bad. The modern McDonald's fry is a pesticide infused potato stick covered in corn syrup powder, MSG, sodium acid pyrophosphate, oh, and guess what else? Dimethyl polysiloxane, a silicone used in sunscreen and cosmetics that's added to McDonald's frying oil to keep from splashing. Sounds scrumptious. The original McDonald's fry was made with natural potatoes. Fried in mostly beef tallow and a sprinkling of salt, it was incredible. And besides the little bit of vegetable oil, when fries are prepared like this in beef tallow, it's actually healthy. That's because beef tallow is, for one, natural. We've been eating it for hundreds of thousands of years. And because it's rich in things like healthy fats, vitamins D, E, choline, while potatoes are a great, easy to digest carb. It's all the seed oils, pesticides, and additives in modern fast food french fries that make it unhealthy. So if you still want to enjoy french fries without the terrible consequences, just make them at home. Use organic potatoes. Fry them in beef tallow or duck fat. It's actually not too hard. It will taste way better, and you get to control the ingredients. We've done it before. It's hard to ever go back. We'll link a good recipe below. And speaking of beef tallow, not only is beef tallow way healthier to use for cooking, beef tallow is also incredible to use on your skin. It's naturally rich in skin-loving ingredients like vitamins A, D, E, choline, and fatty acids, without all the horrible chemicals used in mainstream skincare products that are linked to obesity, depression, infertility, chronic disease, and, in guys, lower testosterone. But rubbing beef tallow on your face is not the most pleasant experience. So that's why we created this. Evil Goods Whipped Tallow Honey Balm, an all-natural moisturizer made with only Mother Nature's finest skin-loving ingredients, whipped up into a light, airy texture that feels just as satisfying to use as toxic mainstream skincare products. This is the only skincare product we put on our skin, and hundreds upon hundreds of customers are already raving about how much it nourishes their skin without any harmful chemicals. We've already sold out recently, which is crazy, but we're back in stock. And now it's available in our new lavender scent, made with only the finest lavender oil. And right now, you can save up to 40% off of your first subscribe and save order when you buy it on Amazon with the link below. Along with grass-fed, grass-finished beef tallow from American cows, it's also got Manuka honey, one of the finest kinds of honey in the world, only found in New Zealand and Australia. Honey has been found to have antibacterial, antifungal, and antiviral effects. We also added in some organic, cold-pressed olive oil, which moisturizes and fights bacteria thanks to its antioxidant properties and is a great natural way to fight acne. And extract from the pot marigold flower, 
an incredible flower that has been used for millennia that has all of these things that give it anti-inflammatory, wound healing, and antioxidant properties. It's made in America, and the reason you know it's real is because if you order it in a hot state like Arizona, it's gonna arrive liquidy. That's because it really is all natural. There are no emulsifiers, stabilizers, or seed oils to keep it magically solid in 100 degree weather. And that is what you want. If it comes liquid, just put it in the fridge for a few minutes and you're good. So click the card on the screen or click the link below to try it out for yourself now. But right now, you can save up to 40% off your first subscribe and save order. And we promise you'll never go back.